Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Late Night Vision Show. My name is Jason, owner of Outdoor Legacy. We specialize in selling all kinds of night vision and thermal optics. And as always, I've got my co-host, Hans, from the Hans East Texas YouTube channel. What is going on, <laughs> Mr. Hans? Hey, y'all. Thank y'all for coming back another week. Let me tell you how this countdown just went down. Jason leading into the show. 10, 8, 6, 7, 5, 4. <laughs> and then he starts talking. That was the countdown for the okay. show tonight. <laughs> I, I, in my defense. Eight, se- 10, 8, 6, 7, 5, 4. <laughs> and I didn't even know that. In my defense, uh, I hurt my back uh, last night pretty bad. I am on no medication other than uh, some Advil my wife gave me, but my back is in terrible pain. And uh, uh, so Hans was like, I don't want you being all loopy on the show. I was like, I haven't taken anything serious yet. So, yeah, no. yeah. But so, that's my excuse. That's, that's yeah. it. Well, he did. He hurt his back. Jason and I, it, we're not going to talk a lot about this because we're going to get into our show pretty quick. But Jason and I had the opportunity. Jason was nice enough to invite me and my wife, Crystal, down to the Texas Gulf Coast Crystal Beach for uh, an extended weekend beach trip uh, to one of their favorite spots. The first time I've ever been to Crystal Beach. Um, been to a, a bunch of beaches around Texas, but this one is the closest to all the folks down here in East Texas. And we had a great time, and y'all were fantastic hosts and, and cooked for us and, I mean, laid out the red carpet. I felt... I don't know about all I that. I felt like we a did have a star, very man. good time. We had a good time, yeah. and I gave, I gave Hans all the warnings about, like, you know, the beach and man i mean it's not like jamaica here we shouldn't he got there like man this is way nicer than you said i said see good i talked it way down (laughs) yeah well you crystal beach and i'm sure most texas beaches there is no shortage of trump flags so and if you there's a lot and if you're selling flags it's definitely the spot to go because you probably make a lot of money selling flags so uh, that's right. But yeah, we had a great time. But thank you all for coming back. This episode 165 of the Late Night Vision Show, your first uh, and only stop, hopefully, uh, hopefully for anything night vision hog, thermal predator hunting. Um, first of all, before Jason gets into the topic, if you're looking for a night vision or thermal optic, please hop on over to OutdoorLegacyGear.com. That's OutdoorLegacyGear.com. You can find all the scopes. All the optics that we talk about right here on the show, you can find it on the website. If you are interested in purchasing and you say, you know what, I'd rather talk to somebody when I when I, uh, when I I purchase things, I mean, you can call us at 877-350-1818. Uh, you can speak to somebody friendly on the phone. And um, if you want to talk to me, you know, if you want to talk to Jason, just you can ask for me directly and we'll be happy to take care of you. But what are we talking about? What scope are we lucky so, enough to have tested we recently? We are talking about the brand new for summer 2021 Envision Optics Halo X35. I have got this little baby right here in my hands right now. And uh, this is what we're going to be reviewing. This is uh, one of the, it's going to be the first of the three optics in the Halo X line. Real quick, I'll just go over those, make this real simple. Uh, This is the Halo X35. It is a two and a half power scope. Uh, It's $74.95. We've got the Halo X50. It's a three and a half power scope and it's $84.95. And then we've got the Halo XRF. This is the granddaddy of all thermals. It has a laser range finder included in it, and it is ninety four ninety five. So that is, uh, you know, the the three, and it's a three and a half power. I should have mentioned that. Mm-hmm. So uh, those are the three models, and we'll eventually be reviewing them all. We're going to start here with this model, just because it's the the first, you know, model, the thirty five. So we're going to yeah. go with it. Uh, Hans and I have used all three of these units. Uh, we've had. Uh, runtime behind them in the field. Hans has been putting out a bunch of videos with the Halo X50. Um, uh, and so uh, you've probably been seeing a lot of those on Instagram and uh, YouTube. But uh, I want to talk real briefly. Uh, this is uh, the last week of June, first week of July in summer 2021. Right now, the availability of all these new Halo Xs is extremely low. Low. 
Uh, they're just still uh, component supply problems, getting enough of the thermal sensors they need to build these things. Uh, so it's just that they just cannot get enough parts to yeah. get as many built as that the market is demanding right now. So uh, I would expect, you know, very long wait times if you want to get one of these scopes right now. All right. So uh, if you're listening to this and it's into the fall of 2021, if it's sometime, you know, next year, 2022, ignore this. We're talking about something specific that's going on in the summer of 2021. And I just want to say that if you're looking for one of these, we would love to have your business. Please call us. But I would expect to be an extended wait. I think it's going to be mm -hmm. several months to get all the orders filled, uh, really just until Envision is able to get enough of those components to build the parts. It's just, and there's two things now. This is a big deal. These are an American-made scope. And so America and Europe are still suffering from a lot of the fallout on component supply in manufacturing. And it's just still an issue. I mean, we're seeing it with, you know, vehicle manufacturers and you know, all these chip and component issues. They can't get what they need. Uh, we're seeing some of that in these thermal optics, especially the ones that are made in America and made in Europe. So uh, if you want to buy American, hey, we think it's a great idea uh, to support American businesses, but it's just be prepared to wait. You just you need some patience right mm -hmm. now. But I think all this is going to work itself out. We definitely seem to be, you know, getting over a lot of this COVID uh, related right. stuff. And so I think, you know, as time goes by, it'll just be something for the history books. Yeah. So this is a very exciting scope review for us today. I, I mean, being able to use this scope, the anticipation of it coming out that we've been waiting for so long and really, Jason, this scope has been able, or the design of the scope and the release of the scope features things that we were told could never happen. That That's exactly right. I mean, I've been told for years by people in this industry uh, that, you know, understand the engineering behind these optics, that, that using a system like Envision uses and like their competitor, um, you know, Trigicon uses with the BAE sensors and cores, uh, that the way their configuration is that gives them this image quality that they get that they could not put internal video recording and, right. uh, you know, putting, you know, streaming, these sort of things just weren't going to be an option. And so when we heard that they actually were able to do this and they had working, you know, units of this, mm -hmm. we were, blown away because it was real, you know, my understanding was that it was just uh, simply impossible for the way their configuration, which is very specific is. Mm -hmm. And I look, here's the deal. They didn't just do that. And I mean, I don't want to take, you know, you want, you're going to run down the specs here in a minute. I don't want to take all this away, but they didn't just put in the video recording. Mm -hmm. They put audio with the recording, right? They put in a, a streaming uh, method of where you can, you know, stream the, the videos, retrieve the recorded videos off there. They also put uh, 18650 rechargeable batteries. Mm -hmm. They have a model that has the laser range finder. So again, I'm, I'm kind of getting into the review, but I just want to say from the outset here, this Halo X35, as well as the 50 and the XRF models, these are game changers for the highest end of the high end scopes. And if there was any question at this point about what the very top end, you know, whatever you want to call them, Rolexes or Ferraris or whatever yeah. of the thermal world is, which I didn't really have any question before. And if y'all are a fan <laughs> of the show, we already knew right. this is it. I mean, th these, these Envision Halo Xs are it. So That's exactly right. uh, they're, they're top of the top. So anyway, <laughs> I know I'm just bragging on this thing right now, and we hadn't even uh, got into the specs in the rundown. But but I just I want to say from the beginning, this is a a very big review for us. It's a scope that I didn't think we would ever see. I didn't think it could be built. Yep. And here we are reviewing it right now. So we're going to jump right into the specs. Um, starting out, this is the Envision Halo X35. So the X series, as you know, will uh, those are the the units that have the internal video recording. 
um, as well as the uh, rechargeable battery. So that's kind of how you know what the difference in some of this stuff is. It's a 640 thermal resolution um, core, 12 micron, 60 hertz refresh rate. It's got a 35 millimeter objective lens. It is fixed focus. So we'll probably talk a little bit about because people will be like, fixed focus. That's not supposed to be a good thing, but we'll we'll talk about that right. here a little bit later. It's a eight time eight times digital zoom. Starts out on two and a half base magnification, goes up to twenty power magnification. We'll also talk about that two point five power uh, magnification a, a little bit later on in the show as well. It's a six forty by four eighty um, OLED display. It does have video and audio recording, so that's a big thing. Some of the scope set come out these days don't have audio but this has, does have the audio and i really like the way that the audio sounds um on the videos and it's it really kind of muffles that the shot a little bit more so it doesn't really uh, if you're listening to it, it doesn't ring your ears when you're listening to, to the video um you know just on your phone or something like that so uh two eighteen six fifty rechargeable batteries thank goodness that they use 18650 rechargeables that you could find pretty much anywhere. I mean, these aren't proprietary batteries. You can find these anywhere, and, man, I am thankful for that. Uh, they say they're getting about seven hours of run time uh, in room temperature conditions. I'd say we're getting pretty close to that right now, and it's summertime in Texas, so it's way, way above room temperature outside. Yeah, I was going to so, say, I, my, mine's running forever, but yeah, forever, I think they yeah. must run longer when it's 1,000 degrees. Yeah, so. but uh, but they say seven hours of run time in room temperatures. Uh, like Jason said, it does have Wi-Fi streaming to your phone, so you can stream the video to your phone as well as, well as download the videos from the scope directly to your phone with Wi-Fi. Now, here's... And some of the things I think uh, they were really conservative when they were talking about some of their ranges and yardages. It says det- detection range, 1,491 yards. Um, didn't <laughs> test it, but way probably way a little bit low. Um, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Recognition range, 524 yards. Uh, so they have two. We, we don't really do this. They have a recognition range, 524 yeah. yards. They have an ID range of 270 yards, which I think um, we'll get into the ranges, but I think that that's very, yeah, that's, very well, that's, conservative. Yeah. Anybody uh, who just heard that number, forget that. Okay? Yeah, just yeah, forget the, anything. And I'm sure right they have th- they have some definition of that, and I'm sure whatever it is is good, but forget that. That yeah. is, it's, yeah, not yeah. not what we're going to call the ID range. So. Yeah, Jay, when, I, when Jason and I were talking about that, he said, what were they talking about, a mouse? ID and a mouse at 270 yards. A, a, a mouse, a mouse yeah. versus a rat at yeah. 250 yards. Yes, I believe that. So weight, um, uh, 32.5 ounces, and price, seven thousand four hundred and ninety-five dollars. Uh, and yep. before you have sticker shock, let you let us tell you about the scope because man, there's a reason why Envision every year since we've done it has won the the award for best high-end thermal optics. Uh, it was for their Halo LR, and I know that these scopes are uh, definitely in the running. We're going to have to pick our favorite one, which is going to be difficult. But no, these are the best that, of the best, man. y'all. And, you know, one of the things that we, we Jason and I, um, I don't want to say struggled with, but what we wanted to do in the past was we wanted to show you the best video we could with these scopes. But it was difficult because the video that we were having to use was recorded from a you know, a, a portable MDVR recorder, which let's face it, the videos just did not do these things justice at all. No. Um, but like Jason said, the videos or, or the, off, or the, the cameras that you put behind them, they oh, just yeah, the, behind yeah. the, the eyepiece on that, the, those that's yeah. just not doing justice. People were putting uh, like. videos behind the eyepiece and every time that it would drive me crazy, every time they'd shoot, that camera would just jerk and tilt at a different angle yeah, and it, it just drove yeah. me crazy. But we, we, uh, Jason and I pride ourselves on trying to bring the best content that we can to um, people out there that are looking to buy optics as well as just people that come and, and want to enjoy these, these hunts. But uh, it was difficult to do that. Now, now sharing these videos, like I've been doing with the, the next model we're, we're going to be reviewing the Halo X50 Man, it's just so nice because it it is a very I think a very uh, true look into what the scope actually looks like, and that is the right. video that you see on your computer, on your phone, wherever you're viewing the video. 
uh, and what you see those through the scope is very close. And man, it's just great yeah, to see. I'm, I'm really, I'm close. really excited about being able to show, share these videos. When before, um, I'd be like, "It's a great scope." I just these videos just make it look like like it's well, not well, worth. Here's the, money. the deal. You, yeah, you never want to show something that doesn't uh, doesn't do justice to oh, what yeah. the, you know, the end user is really going to see. And that's just where we were. We we're like, love the scope looks wonderful, but if we can't show yeah. accurately, and I think now the video that we're getting off here on this internal video recording is unbelievable. Well, listen, before we get into any more of that, cause I, we're going to, I can already tell I started reviewing the scope in the intro. You're reviewing the scope and the specs is cause we're excited. Let me go over just a real quick rundown. It's not going to take long. This is a very uh, easy scope to go over. All right, right here on the front, we've got a flip lens cap. This cap will rotate around so you can put it wherever you want it to, uh, to be. We've got that moving back. Uh, we'll go right here to the top. This is going to be a little hard to see on my video. Uh, right here is a good rubberized cover that fits down in there snugly. That's where it's snugly. Snugly. <laughs> it's not snugly. 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 <laughs> that's where your USB cable goes. And uh, that's where you can uh, pull your videos off uh, if you're hooking it to your computer. Uh, also, I'm just going to say this because I know I'll forget later. If you own one of these and you're going to hook it to your computer to pull the videos, you have to go into the menu in the scope and allow it to, uh, you know, put the video out on that port. Just so just look, you have to go to the menu to do that. That's all you need to know. Not a big deal. But if you don't know it, you'll be hunting. Uh, moving back. This is my favorite part. Hans already knows I'm going to go nuts over this. I'm going to talk about it more later. But uh, I'm holding this on the side. This is really the top of the scope. And we have the buttons on the top. Very ergonomic, uh, ambidextrous, left or right-handed users will love this. And we have my favorite design, which is a up, down, left, right, center button like every remote <laughs> control that you've ever used. Brilliant design. Thank you, Envision. The I think the way they did it with... Uh, um, you know, what the buttons do is very simple to remember. Oh, yeah. uh, their, their menu system, what I like about it is it's extremely simple. It almost looks uh, kind of old school because it's so simple, but you don't get lost. They have good description of what things are. Very nice. Uh, moving on back, we do have this rubber eye cup. Uh, it will very easily fold up. Uh, you can take that off and put it back on if you don't want it. We have the diopter, which is uh, the eyepiece focus. So you can focus the screen to your eye. Uh, and then on the bottom, again, and this is hard to see on my video, uh, but this is the American Defense Manufacturing Quick Detach Mount. And I want to make a point on two things. One of them is going to be on this mount. This is a great, great mount. Anybody who watches this show knows that Hans and I are huge fans of American Defense. Mm -hmm. uh, they, in my opinion, make the best mounts on the market. Yes, there's some other good manufacturers, but I think American Defense is uh, top of the line. These mounts do return to zero. We have tested them. We use the American Defense mounts on a lot of other optics, tested them all. They return to zero. They're legit mounts. I know there's some guys who are like, oh, I don't want this big scope on this little bitty QD throw lever. Well, I guess if you want to put one that's three or four inches long for no reason, you sure can. But I see no reason to do it. This is the mount they've always used uh, on these scopes, and it works excellent. I just have no issues with it. And uh, so anyway, I love the mount. Uh, the other thing, Hans mentioned it. So I want to go ahead and talk about it before we forget. The unit is a fixed focus. You can see here there's no focus ring. It's just hard plastic. And this is confusing because uh, if you take, uh, you know, much, well, anything in the, in the less expensive scope options, if you have a fixed focus scope, you're normally not going to get quite the clarity that you would get out of a focusable lens. Um, I cannot explain it. I don't know how they do it, but uh, Envision and 
uh, you know, some of these top companies have these high end units and they are able to have a fixed focus that is sharp as a tack, sharper than some, uh, you know, focusable lenses. All right. And so I don't know how they do it. It doesn't matter. What I'm telling you is everything you know about fixed focus does not matter on this super high end optic. Mm -hmm. Uh, they have it mastered and it looks really really good so there is zero concern there um if if they thought they could make it focusable and it would improve it they would do it and one thing that uh, we didn't mention in the specs that uh, i just think needs to be brought up is uh, one of the claim to fame and this is really something that it's inside baseball and when i say inside it's even inside so far as it's kind of over the heads of hans and i but it's it is a big deal and that is the germanium lenses that Envision is using in these optics. They have always uh, given the specs on the type of germanium lenses they use uh, because uh, the better that lens is, the better the image quality is going to be. And they upped the quality again in all of their rifle mounted optics, even the Halo LR that's been around for several years. They're now putting this newer, improved faster lens in it and it is uh very good and it if you put them side by side you know it is noticeable that this is an improvement so right. anyway it i'd say this uh, if you know like what a halo lr is you've seen one of those uh this is that unit plus a little bit more so. right right so um id ranges and, and i'm gonna say um you know, without conferring with you, which we don't, we don't like to do. Yeah, quite we haven't often. really. Well, yeah, we don't like to talk about it and yeah, yes, yeah, so and sway each other. So, what would you say? I, I'd say it's going to be um, about five hundred yards, maybe a little bit I more. Was, if you'd have said any less than 500, 500 yards, you're going to look for a new. So, house. whatever double, yeah, double what Envision says, almost. <laughs> uh, Envision yeah. says two seventy. So, I'm say around five hundred, and uh, you know, for a. Uh, Two pa well, this is we, we need to talk about the magnification right here too. I think okay. this is a good time to do it. Um, All right. So you want, yeah, you want to talk about that, or you want me to handle? It? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it real quick. But I, I just want to say that five hundred. I think those are normal, good conditions. Um, you know, obviously, I think you get really humid, wet, mm -hmm. nasty conditions. Maybe it m may not be five hundred. You know, in terrible conditions, it may be two hundred, maybe two fifty. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe further than that. I, I'm just saying. I think that's a really uh, fair mm -hmm. and conservative uh, ID range for an experienced hunter that knows what he's looking at. I think there's no problem identifying a hog or a coyote or a deer at that kind of range. I'm not encouraging you to shoot that far. Okay. <laughs> but I do think that you could ID uh, the animal at that far. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So, right. so go ahead. If you want to talk about the, the magnification. Yeah. The base point. magnification, let's talk about that. It says 2.5 power base magnification. You know, this is something that we've talked to a lot of people in the, the thermal optic industry. We've, We've talked to Envision. We've talked to all, all of them. And um, we thought, along with many, many other hunters, professional hunters, dealers, um, that even the Halo LR, which was rated at three and a half power base magnification, was more like um, th a, was three. more like three. And, and here's the thing. There's no, st I guess there's no standard. <laughs> it's what every thermal company says that their base magnification is. Um, so, but what we noticed was that Envision's three and a half power looked more like everybody else's three power. So I don't know, you know, it's not saying that I don't every care other, who's right. Yeah. It, yeah. It, I don't care who's right. It just, you've got to compare it. And I don't think, and, yeah. And I don't think that there, anybody knows who's right. They're all guesstimating what their base magnification is. And it doesn't matter if Envision's right or some of these other companies was right. Um, but we want to make sure that, you know, that on this Halo X35, it says two and a half power. It's probably closer to about two power. Does that matter? You know, does that make a difference at all, really, in the overall performance of the scope? N not at all, in my opinion. N it, it's, no, it's, you it's just, just need a, to know if you're coming from a, a a three power, and you say, "Well, I'll go to this. It's only two and a half. Well, it's really going to be a two. Or if you're coming from a two, uh, yeah, yeah. Or if your buddy's yeah. got and, a two and, and, and a half power base magnification, and and yours is two and a half, and y'all line it up and 
you know, yours doesn't seem quite as close, then that's probably why. But it does not affect the performance of the scope at all. No. It's a, so yeah, so it's we really would say that the Halo X35s are going to be, uh, again, compared to the average other scope on the market, they're going to be close to two yep. power. And the Halo X50s, Halo LRs, XRFs, those are going to be closer yep. to three power than three and a half. Exactly. So, yeah, no big deal. But, I mean, it's nothing new. That's the no, way the LR is. Nothing was new. Well, Everybody, so. like I said, this is kind of behind the scenes baseball stuff, but most people in the industry knew this. Um, but, again, I want to talk about the likes and dislikes because I've got a I, laundry list. Hey, can I list. do something real quick? Yeah. I'd, I'd realized in my walk around, I did so bad that I didn't even turn the scope around and show you the batteries. <laughs> ah. So some people see this thing over here and they're like, what is that big thing? Yeah. Is that the, is that the laser range finder? This is not the laser range finder. Um, on the laser range finder model, it does sit in front of it. This is the dual 18650 battery pack. So you can see me unscrewing this right yeah. here. And uh, these batteries just slide right out of there. Two 18650s. Uh, they do provide two 18650 batteries, two mm -hmm. quality batteries with it. Uh, and then, you know, you can buy your own, obviously, uh, to supplement that. But anyway, I just wanted to show what that yeah, was. Yeah, that's a major part. Uh, that was the, the battery. <laughs> yeah, major parts, the 18650 batteries, and I already forgot it. But yeah, yeah. so I just wanted to show that. Yeah. And basically, I'm trying to do this. And, you know, nothing's easy to do when you're recording the show. But you basically yeah. slide this in here and and twist this little well, little cap, and I cannot get it back. I can't. I'm going to This is I, I like can't. where the monkeys get loose out of the cage. <laughs> exactly. Well, there's <laughs> there's been a, a few scope reviews where we've gone through and not even told the price. So I think this is... Exactly. Uh, <laughs> this is a minor detail. <laughs> yeah, so the, but the battery components, uh, it's a big deal. But uh, no, so likes and dislikes. I'm going to tell you, I love this scope. <laughs> I, and I love the, all the Halo X, uh, all of them in the line. There's And there's a lot more. Um, like Jason said, the Halo XRF with the laser rangefinder. You know, you got the Halo X50, which is higher base magnification. This X35 um, is great for specific people. And, and, uh, I'm going to tell you what I love about it. First of all, picture image, unbelievable. The, the Envision optics are even more improved than the, um, than the, I don't want to say the older scopes, but the, the prior Halo LRs, which are still around and all the Halo LRs, like you said, have the, yeah, they're still they improved, around and improved. Yeah. They have so, the per, yeah. improved ger germanium, but the, if you look at a Halo sure. LR from two years ago and one, look at one today, the picture looks better on the one today. So their picture image is all, continuing to get better, and in this one, it looks fantastic. Uh, the video and audio recording was flawlessly easy to use. Um, I hooked this, the scope. I, I, a lot of people ask me about Wi-Fi streaming on, on other scopes and with this one. Really, y'all, I don't even mess with it, to tell you the truth. I don't either. Um, I, don't I Yeah, we hook our scopes right up to our laptops. And I know not everybody has the ability to do that, but we're trying to preserve and maintain the highest quality um, process processing that we can when that scope um, is shown to you. So the way to do that, uh, you know, is to hook it up directly and to I the computer. I can tell computer. you this. I can, I can have a cord hooked into this, into my laptop, and be watching the videos before somebody else over here fumbling with their yeah, Wi-Fi. Yeah. So, I so, mean, no no offense to Envision, just all of these streaming and whatever, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I just want to I, and kill I, We hook it up to our I'll plug it in the yeah, computer. We, I guess I'm just an old-timer, but yeah, it's so easy. Exactly. You're done. So, so these, okay, so, yeah. yeah video, like uh, video and auto recording rechargeable batteries. Man, what another awesome feature that uh, they listen to the consumers and this is, you know, video and audio recording was one thing and rechargeable batteries. They did it um, again, pushing the envelope for what high end thermals um, scope owners should expect and should get uh, the American defense manufacturing mount. Any company that uses American De uh, defense manufacturing knows what's up <laughs> they they know That's exactly right they you know can trust the company yeah they can identify working with good vendors and good companies like adm a company we like to work with so again they you know, i see choice. what's fixing to happen you're going to leave me and to say the negative things Sh no because i do have one negative you're, you're, it's a big negative but okay what, um, what's your one negative no i want to i'm not done you, Oh, you're still not I'm done? still going, yeah. Gosh. 
the man, the, the menu setup, you a lot of people think, man, I'm buying the high end scope. It's seventy five hundred dollars. It's going to be like using a piece of equipment that's attached to a jet fighter or something, you know, military grade <laughs> that you got to take classes to to work. This scope, y'all, is so easy to to navigate, manage, set up, side in, and the the small little instruction manual that they give to you is no, makes the process so easy. I mean, it's it it's is so, so simple. Good. They're, they're the best to, instructions. We've talked about yeah. this over and over. Yeah. It's the best instructions that any thermal manufacturer has ever put with an optic, period. Yeah. Uh, the scope period. comes with a nice hard case. You buy a $7,500 scope, you expect, man, I'd like to have a nice case to put in. The nicest scope case on the market, you, you would expect. Um, it, I mean... That's I'll end it there. If I missed anything, Hans is, Hans is gushing it. over a new girlfriend. Uh, I mean, this is like this, golly. Yeah, this scope, man. <laughs> uh, this one and and the others in the Halo X line. There was a lot of hype. There was a lot of anticipation. Um, people, it was crazy, Jason. And you know this. People were jumping in line to buy this scope, really without knowing hardly anything about it other than it recorded video and had rechargeable battery in record numbers and sat on lists for several months. And people still sitting on a list for several months uh, for this scope and other scopes. And man, it's a good problem to have for, when it's not necessarily a good problem to have for Envision, they want to get more of these out, but yeah, but the it, fact that it, it just the, shows the demand shows that how great, how much people loved, you know, the, the Halo LR, uh, you know, and the other, the Halo scopes and now to have the improvements and, you know, the, the, um, the, the newer models and people just flock into it like crazy. But I'll let you, if you have five okay. missing likes, so, and then I'll give my one. So I do. Yeah, so I got a question because I don't know. I, folks, I'm not going to lie to you all. My back is killing me. I've kicked the table trying to move around. I'm up and down in this chair, Gosh. and I'm sorry. I'm, I'm in some pain. So uh, did you mention the, the warranty in your specs? I did not. I don't know if you I did. I did not mention Okay, it, yeah. So, so, yeah, so I'm thinking of all kinds of things, but yeah. I'm not in my right mind. So, by the way, folks, that battery cap is really goes on easy when you turn it the right way. So just so you <laughs> oh, know that, uh, when, when you turn the right way, it just falls right into place. I so promise y'all we've used the scopes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. War hey, I, I will tell you this. We've used the scopes, but I have not taken that battery pack off very many times because it lasts forever. So yeah. you don't you don't have to take that lid off. It's, it's kind of easy to get turned around. You gotta, you, I always have yeah. to watch it real close when I take it off and I lay it on the desk right. the same way I take it off. So I'm make sure that I know I'm putting yeah, it back on. Something right. stupid. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So warranty on these scopes is a huge, huge deal. Mm -hmm. um, Envision offers a five year warranty and they have an extremely fast turnaround time. So this is a big deal for Envision owners, as you would expect when you're buying this kind of an optic that you're, uh, you know, you, you would expect, Hey, I'm going to get, better service. I'm buying this high-end optic and you do. You're getting the service uh, that you deserve and that you've paid for uh, with these more expensive thermal optics. Mm -hmm. um, so five years, uh, that is a very long time compared to a lot of the competition that's only offering three years. And again, uh, giving you this Super turnaround time as fast as they can, uh, very quickly. Um, I don't know anybody that's been without their Envision scope if they had some issues that they had to send in for for more than you know a few days, uh, you know at, at most a week. So uh, really, really good service. So again, a big plus is that five year warranty. Now, uh, you know, I did owe everything Han said on all the positives. Uh, you know, I could go on and on about that. I, I do think that um, I'm going to say my negatives first, and then I'll come back to my positives. So there's a few small things. Um, I'm looking at my list here. I was taking some notes while you were talking things that you didn't say. Uh, one, I'm going to go to this. This is important for someone who owns uh, another thermal scope now, and they don't know this about like the, the Envisions and the, and the Trigicons. These scopes have manual calibration only. 
So what that means is, is that uh, every thermal optic on the market, uh, the thermal sensor has to be recalibrated. And uh, I don't want to get into a big explanation of that, but most scopes have an automatic or a semi-automatic calibration. Automatic just means the screen just flickers or like clicks one time, you know, every so, and I say so often, it might be every 15 seconds, it might be every 45 seconds, just as the scope needs, it'll automatically do it. Or in semi-automatic mode, you can press a button and it will do that and just clears the screen up. It keeps the image looking the best that it can be. Well, with these optics, that's not an option. So you're using your scope and when your screen starts getting a little dark or grainy and you go, you know what, that sensor needs to be calibrated, you close the lens cap and you press the button. And it just takes a second, you press the button and your screen kind of flickers for a second and comes right back. You've opened the lens cap back up. Now, I can guarantee you just about any Envision user out there says, big deal. I, it's muscle memory. I do it over and over and over. But I just want people to know because there's some guys who've been using thermals a long time and they've never had to do this. And so it comes as kind of a shock to them when they go, wait a minute, I just paid seven, eight thousand dollars for this scope and I got to close the lens cap and press a button, you know, every so often. So, mm -hmm. yes, it's just something to be aware of. It's the way all the scopes work uh, and it's just the way that it is. Uh, so manual nuke only and the size, it's a pretty big scope. Okay, it's pretty heavy. Uh, doesn't bother me, but I mean, it, it just, I want to make it, you know, if I, we're here to nitpick. That's what Hans and I always say. We're going to be honest with you. We're going to tell you what we wish was different. Uh, if I could build this scope and snap my fingers, it would have an, uh, a semi-auto calibration mode or an auto mode. It would be a little smaller, but I mean, it's not obscenely big by any mm. means. Uh, it's just on the larger side. Uh, and then the last thing, again, nitpicking this scope, is I wish that the boot up was a little bit faster. So what happens is, and this is the only thing that, that bothers me just a little bit, is when you turn the scope on, it comes on. You can flip open the lens cap and you could look through it. But as soon as you about the time you have time to open that up, then it basically does this, you know, startup calibration. And then if you have the lens cap open, it messes it up. So mm -hmm. then you got to cl close the lens cap and manually nuke it. So the problem is that I run into is I turn the scope on and we're impatient. Let's just be honest about it. You're like, oh, my scope's on. I want to look through it. And you want to flip the lens cap open. And when right. you do... It's going to calibrate that time. Then you're going to, it's just an auto calibration when you first turn it on. You're going to have to close the lens cap, press the button. Right. Uh, that's, I mean, again, it's minor, but it is something that, that I catch myself opening the lens cap too soon every time. Uh, I know somebody's going to put in the comments and they're going to say, How long does it take? I don't know. I didn't time it. It's not like 30 seconds or anything, yeah. it's a few seconds. It's not, a, it's not an obscenely long startup time. It's just something that uh, I, I've got to get used to of leaving that lens cap closed. The other problem is that sometimes I'll turn it on and I won't be looking through it. So I won't know if it's already done it or not. I'm like, oh, it's been enough time. And about the time I open it, it does it. So, you know, if those are my only negatives, then I think we're doing pretty good. Uh, this is a fantastic scope. I think that the positives, I don't want to just, you know, beat a dead horse but image quality image quality image quality ease of use this button layout um w if you wear gloves this is way easier than the halo lrs where it's on the side uh i just think these buttons you can feel better I, again it's beside not being on the side i think it's more ambidextrous i think it's it's easier to just naturally lay your hand up or even if you're uh you know left-handed laying your hand up on the scope uh to run it uh, again batteries 18650s long battery life huge deal uh I just can't say enough good about the scope. I think it if 
if, and I'm going to roll right into this, Hans, I don't know what's next on our list. I think it's well, who is the scope good just, for, and that's where yeah, I want to go. I, I'll give my one that's, negative before we get in that. But Oh, oh okay. It, All right. it's, it's, some, no, it's no big deal. It was the same thing you said, just the, the manual recalibration or nuke. Um, it, you know, it's not it's something we're used to. Uh, gosh, I, I, I don't want to ask for that. You know, if there's any way y'all could figure that out, that'd be great because they've already given us I'm, recording. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, it's, you like know, it's like the, what the, else the kid that's never happy. No, yeah, it's the kid that's never it's happy. A, it, it's a minor thing. Um, but the manual nuke, it, I've, I ran into, and I've run into issues where just recently had a coyote coming in. I nuked it when he was a couple hundred yards away. Um, it needed to be re nuked when he got closer, but he was cresting a hill. So I could not, um, I couldn't see the scope while he was running up that hill. When, when he got to the crest of that hill, we were only like 30 yards apart. So I could not close that lens cap because I needed to see it, see him get to the top of that hill where I was. So that's where I was like, man, I, I need to nuke it, but I can't because I don't want to take my eyes off of where he could come up. And so when I shot him, it could have been nuked better than it was. And that was because I didn't, I couldn't shut the lens cap. It just, you know, and that's where you find it. So, Coyote hunting or calling in pigs is where it's, it seems to be the biggest issue or problem. So I want to say this about it. Um, it is a pain. I don't like it. I don't want to make a mountain out of this molehill. Uh, but I'll say this. If you own a thermal scope that is made in America, then you're going to, I mean, as of today, as of, you know, basically beginning of July, 2021, mm-hmm. if you own a thermal scope made in America, you're going to have a manual nuke. Yeah. If you own a thermal scope today that costs over $7,000 and is sold in the United States, you're going to have a manual nuke. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is not a, a, a quote issue with this scope. It is uh, and I feel like we've, we've really hammered on this a lot in this review, but I think we, we do need to let people know that because this is the kind of scope normally that a guy's upgrading to. Mm-hmm. So he's come in from something else. He's owned another scope, maybe two or three scopes, and he's taking the plunge into the high end. So it's just something you need to know. But like I said, you're not going to buy another thermal, high end thermal scope mm-hmm. uh, that is any different than that. So that's right. just the way that it is. Now, Let's go on to who it's good for, and I'll jump in on this because I think this scope is better for me than it is Hans, uh, and that is because Hans does more coyote hunting than I do, and so he likes a little more magnification. I think he likes nowadays in that three power, and uh, I prefer the super up close in your face hog hunting, which Hans does a lot of that, but I, I want to be really close. I want the big wide field of view. Um, you know, he probably hunts on some fields that are a little bigger than some of mine sometimes. So a little extra magnification and a little less field of view doesn't hurt him much. Uh, but for me as a primary, primarily a hog hunter, this is for me. Uh, the, the two power, I know two and a half, we've already talked about that, but what really functions as a two power is where I personally want to be. Um, if you, if you need that little extra magnification, you know, if, if you're a, if you're a coyote hunter, most of the time, then I would say, Hey, you probably need the halo X 50 and we'll do a review of that, uh, in the coming weeks or months as well. So, you know, stick around we'll, we'll be doing that. But I think that's going to be better for you. This scope is, uh, don't get me wrong, if you need to shoot 250 or 300 yards, this scope is capable of it because the image quality is fantastic even if you have to zoom it up. Even in the digital zoom, it stays really, really crisp and sharp. I mean, unbelievably good. It's probably something we should have put in one of the likes, how good it looks as you continue to go up. So you can take those shots, but you are going to find yourself zooming up. So, if somebody just held me down and say, who's this good for? I would say, if you're a hog hunter and you're hunting in the South and you're doing most of your shooting under a hundred yards, this is absolutely the optic for you. If you're a guy who's going to do a little bit of coyote hunting, or maybe you're hunting some farm ground and you could have to shoot out there, uh, even on a hog at, you know, 125 to 200 yards. Sometimes I think it's, it's still good for that. 
but primarily I think you, you're going to want to be that guy that's doing a lot of shooting under a hundred, 150 mm-hmm. yards. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that hundred percent. So overall thoughts, what do you think about this thing? I think that there's something else we haven't talked about. And I think that that is the value right. of what you're getting for $7,500. And listen, folks, I know there's a lot of people that have watched this review. They might have already clicked off. Some of them are still watching. They're going, value, $7,500. What is this? Listen, mm-hmm. there's something for everybody, okay? And there's a lot of people who this is their hobby. They're not buying $40,000 bass boats. Right. You know, they don't have a membership to the country club. They're hogging coyote hunting. This is their hobby, and they want the best tools to do it with, and they're willing to spend the money. This is a value in the market at $7,500 because yeah. uh, let's look at why. So the Halo LR uh, has always been and is still $7,500. This scope, but again, it's it's the the three and a half power. This is the two and a half model, two and a half power model. But this scope is getting you all the bells, all the whistles, the latest germanium lens uh, for the best image quality. All of this, I mean, battery packs, video recording, the streaming that you're getting it all for the exact same price as the current model. You know, again, it's got a little more magnification, so that's, you know, better for some people. But it's an unbelievable. I mean, Mm -hmm. I I expected this scope to be minimum of $8,000. I honestly, if you'd have, you know, pinned me down and said, what is Envision going to do? Or if you just said, Envision has a thermal optic that's going to have video recording in 18650s, what's the cost going to be? I would think they're only going to have one scope. Yeah. And I would guess that it would be about nine to $10,000 with no laser range finder and they'd have one model. Right. And if they had, do you know what would have happened? They'd have sold every one of them they could have made. Yeah, exactly. But instead, they came out with three models, including the laser range finder, mm-hmm. uh, you know, on the $9,500 model. So uh, if you look at their direct competition, um, you know, with like Trigicon, who we've talked about on the show, they make great optics, but these are blowing them out of the water. Uh, image quality wise, now features, price wise. I mean, these things, when you compare to, what their competition is, they're just a bargain. Yeah, and very well said. I think you're right. Bargain. Um, and it's, you know, like you bargain said. Bargain at $7,500. $7, I mean, I know but it I sounds you, like a lot. You, and it you is, put it but. the right way, though. This is a lot of people spend money on their hobbies. Um, even so more, you know, through the pandemic, people have spent more money on their hobbies than ever before. But you and I were at the beach this weekend. What did we see? We saw huge rigs yeah. of these you know people fishing from the beach that they had trailers that were built special for oh holding, crazy yeah. holding all these fishing rods and all these led lights around that were pointed at the fishing rods i mean and i was like man that's that is some you know that's got to be an expensive setup and you know people spend money on that's what right. they love to do and if you do if you hunt as much as Jason and I hunt, you want the best of the best. If there's a lot of people out there um, that hunt a lot, and it's what they do on all their free time. They don't spend money on anything else. And to them, this really is a bargain um, at seventy four ninety five with all the features that it's included. And you're right now, you've got three different models to choose from. Uh, the t- this two two and a half power uh, X thirty five is uh, a very very good scope. And if you are looking to purchase this scope uh like jason mentioned at the beginning of the show this is the uh end of june 2021 availability is uh very tight i mean it's not going to loosen up for the next several months Um, but what i would hope you do and what i invite you to do is stay tuned to this show because we are hopefully you find us as a source for uh, all the breaking news and night vision thermal optics as soon as these things start to loosen back up and become more available, you will hear about it first on this show, I promise you. So uh, if you want to find out more about this scope, uh, if you want to check it out online, if you want to uh, uh, see more, other, you know, see other thermal scopes and kind of compare and contrast, uh, you can do so at OutdoorLegacyGear.com, OutdoorLegacyGear.com to order anything night vision thermal related. You can call us at 877-350-1818. If you want to find Jason, 
uh, on all the socials. You can do so at Outdoor Legacy, and that's on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and YouTube. And you can find me on uh, on YouTube at Hans ETX, as well as Instagram, Hans ETX. And if you want to find, lastly, if you want to find all of our past episodes uh, of uh, any of the Late Night Vision show shows, you can do so at the latenightvisionshow.com. Easiest place to find them. Scroll through and uh, see all of our reviews of all the optics that we've done, along with the, all the hog and predator hunting discussions that we've had as well. So we appreciate it, yeah. Absolutely, folks. We hope you enjoyed this review, and we hope to see you next week. Uh, tune in to The Late Night Vision Show on YouTube or on all your podcast apps. Um, subscribe so you never miss an episode. We hope to see you next week here again. So between now and then, y'all stay safe in the fields and keep making those bacon pancakes.